How would you like to build your own AI chatbot without needing to write a single line of code? With Zapier's Interfaces tool, you can get a fully functional chatbot up and running in a matter of minutes. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we help people to create time with Zapier and other no-code automation tools, AI, and more. If you'd like to see more videos about optimizing your workflows every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the process of building a no-code chatbot in Zapier. Let's get started. Until recently, it wouldn't have been possible to create a chatbot like this with Zapier. But now with their new interfaces feature, Zapier is evolving from an automation provider to more of an application development platform. There are also some serious technical limitations with Zapier's chatbot, as many of the underlying features are still in beta but it will only get better and more functional from here. Building a no-code chatbot in a Zapier interface is very simple and only takes a few minutes. I'll give you a quick overview of how it works now, then I'll walk you through the whole process step-by-step. Step. First, you'll create a new interface in Zapier, then add a chatbot component to one of the interface's pages. Configure your chatbot settings to your liking by providing a title, a directive, and other useful options. Open up your live page to test out your chatbot. Once everything is all set, copy the link to share it with anyone on the web. Now, let's take a closer look at each one of these steps. As we've already alluded to, building an AI chatbot in Zapier will lean heavily on Zapier's recently added interfaces. So what is an interface in Zapier? An interface creates a simple UI where users can interact with several Zapier automations or other tools that you've built through a web page. You can add chatbots, forms, links, and other components to your Zapier interfaces. Interfaces are a great option if you've been looking for a simple way to package and share automations with coworkers. They're especially useful if you're not already using an app like Airtable that can offer similar features out of the box. The core features of interfaces are accessible with any Zapier account. However, some premium features will require a premium interfaces plan, which is in addition to your existing Zapier subscription. For instance, if you want to use custom URLs or remove Zapier branding from your interfaces, or even if you want to have your chatbot provide longer responses, you'll need a premium plan. That said, everything we cover today can be done with a free interfaces plan, so you can explore these features without having to spend another penny upfront. To get started with making a custom AI chatbot in Zapier interfaces, log into Zapier and select interfaces in the menu on the left. Create a new interface and choose start from scratch. The interface will start with a blank page, simply titled page. Just to clarify some of the structure and terminology used here, an interface consists of one or more pages. Every page will have its own URL and can hold several components, such as a chatbot, a form, or a table. Let's add a new component to this page and scroll down to chatbot. When we select chatbot, we get this pop-up warning us that the chatbot component is an experimental feature that's subject to change. That's fine. We'll click on yes to continue. Now you'll see a new chatbot component configured with Zapier's default settings. On the right, we have a panel where we can customize our chatbot's functionality and display settings. For example, I'm going to configure this chatbot to be an automation brainstorming tool. When a user gives the name of a few apps, the chatbot should provide a list of ways to automate those apps using Zapier. First, we can set a name for the chatbot. We'll call ours Automation Brainstormer. Next, I'm going to skip ahead to one of the most important parts of the chatbot, the directive. The directive is where we can tell the chatbot what to do. We tell it what kind of answers it should give, the tone it should use, and the overall identity that it should assume. In general, the more detail you can provide in your directive, the better the chatbot will perform to your expectations. Filling out the directive right away will make it easier to configure your other settings and test your chatbot as you continue to build your page. Here's a directive I've already written up for our chatbot. If you'd like to use that directive as a starting point for your own chatbot, check out the description below for a link to this video's resources board. There's a ton of stuff in there, including the directive. Next, we can choose a default greeting for our chatbot to use. We can either provide a static greeting that will be used every time, or we can open up this dropdown to select Generated to use an AI-generated greeting instead. Here's a good example of why you should fill out the directive early on. 
With the directive already provided, we can ask the chatbot to describe what it does, and it can actually provide an answer based on its directive. Let's take a look at our live page to see what that looks like. If you want to look at your live page at any time, just click on the link here to the top left. As soon as we open up the page, the chatbot greets us as we asked it to. It describes what it is and what it can do, and it tells us to list some apps to get started. And if we refresh the page, we get a similar but slightly different opening response. Using a generated greeting can help to easily add a little more personality and detail, but it does run the risk of being a bit inconsistent. Just choose whatever you think is most appropriate for your use case. I'll stick with the generated greeting for now. I want to show off what the chatbot can do right from the get-go. Now let's go back to the interface editor. To resume editing any component, like our chatbot in progress, just hover over the component and click edit. The next setting we need to configure is the prompt placeholder. This is just the static placeholder text that the user will see before they start typing their prompt. You can enter whatever you'd like here. I'll just add a message that says, list two or more apps to get some automation ideas. We've already entered a directive, so next let's look at model. If you've subscribed to the Interface's premium plan, you'll be able to choose from different language models for your chatbot to use. On the free plan, you'll have to stick with OpenAI's GPT 3.5. Upgrading to the premium plan will also let you increase the max response length. On the free plan, you'll be limited to a response of about 2,048 tokens, which is equivalent to about 1,500 words. This slider will let us change the creativity of the bot. This setting is often called the model's temperature in other AI tools and by OpenAI itself. The higher the number, the more creative the bot will try to be in its answers, but that also means that you're more likely to see hallucinations, or instances where the chatbot provides factually incorrect answers. Ultimately, if you want to build a chatbot that's more likely to provide reliable, factual answers, you should really set the temperature or creativity to zero. But whenever you're dealing with a chatbot, hallucinations are always a possibility. Since this bot is all about brainstorming and we're mostly just demonstrating the setup, it's okay if it comes up with some ideas that aren't totally accurate. So we'll leave it at the default of 0.7 for now. Next, there's a simple toggle that lets us choose whether or not to display a disclosure message. When we toggle it on, the chatbot will include this disclosure message at the bottom of every message it sends. Zapier provides a default disclosure, which you can edit if you'd like. If you want to be absolutely sure that your users know they're interacting with an AI chatbot, including the disclosure is a good way to go. The last options in this content tab are just a couple of settings to control the visual layout of the chatbot component. With these options, you can change the width and alignment of your chatbot. We're nearly finished configuring our chatbot now. Let's take a quick look at the other tabs here. Under data, we just see a coming soon message. This feature isn't finished yet, but at some point you should be able to provide data that your chatbot can use to inform its answers. This will help your chatbot to give more specific answers about your company or your product without having to write an extremely long and detailed directive. A current leader in custom chatbot storage is called Pinecone, but you'll need to build a non-Zapier-based chatbot to leverage Pinecone. Chatbase might also be worth a look. Both links are in the resources board linked down below. Reach out to X-Ray if you'd like to build a chatbot for your company using custom data like your blogs, about us page, and really anything else that you think people might be searching. If you're interested, you can book a meeting through Calendly in the resources board linked down below. Under embed, you can grab the HTML embed code for your page, but only if you have a premium interfaces subscription. Finally, under Actions, we can connect our chatbot to some automated actions. For now, all of the actions have to be triggered with a button, and there are only two choices. We can configure the button to copy the text of the chatbot's message, or have it launch a zap. For instance, you might want to build a zap that will let the user send the chatbot's response to a Slack channel with a single click. For now, we'll just add a copy message button to our chatbot. We'll add an action and provide some text for the button and notification. The onClick action is already set to copy response. 
so we'll leave it as is. Then we'll click Create Action and add it to our chatbot. Now we're all set to test our chatbot on the live page. We'll click on the link to open it up. Immediately, our Automation Brainstormer chatbot introduces itself with a generated message. Now, I'll ask it how to automate Pipedrive, Shopify, and Microsoft Teams. In just a matter of seconds, it comes up with a list of eight ideas for automating these apps. Let's see how it handles a follow-up question. I'll ask for more information about automation number one. Now, it provides a more detailed set of instructions for building the first automation it described. Not bad. I'll click on the copy message text button that we added to save the answer for later. If you'd like to try out a real automation brainstorming chatbot, just go to xray.tools and search the apps you'd like to use. Select any app to view a detailed list of its available triggers, actions, and searches on Zapier and other automation platforms. On that page, you can also ask a dedicated chatbot for more information about the app's capabilities and API documents. Just go to xray.tools to get started or check the link in the resources board down below. Building a no-code AI chatbot with Zapier interfaces is a fast and easy way to leverage a helpful AI assistant for your team. It only takes a few minutes to get started, so try it out today. Just bear in mind that we're working with a lot of experimental and beta features here, and you'll see a lot of updates to these tools over the next few months, so be ready to adapt. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human and like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, you can take our class or you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. You can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can see all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, don't forget, keep the flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.